one time, you know, me and my auntie, you know, me and my auntie, we talk about all kinds of things. And so my auntie said, well, you know, the devil also praises his own. And, you know, we weren't talking about me in that instance. We were talking about something else. And my auntie, you know, she, you know, we we be talking about the word. I mean, contrary to some people might believe that it's like, okay, because my, you know, the words that come out of my mouth are, you know, so over the top, people automatically assume that I am the devil. I'm the de devil worshiper. I believe in what's that other shit that motherfuckers be thinking, be talking about? Illuminati. I don't even know what the fuck all that shit is. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what the fuck Illuminati got to do with that. I any time I run from that shit because I believe in God straight the fuck up. Okay. Now I know some people. Well, why are you gonna say straight the fuck up and still say God if you don't stop it and realize that He knows my heart? Okay. <laughs> So get up off me. Don't be mad at me, boo-boo, because you're looking in your surroundings and your shit didn't turn out right. Don't be mad at me because I didn't do it, okay? It might be some of that pussy you gave up or the lack of. I don't know, okay? Or you probably, you know, was fucking with the wrong type. Sometimes you could just fuck with the wrong ones and it don't really mean you're no good. You know, and you're trying to put pieces together that really don't go there. It's like, uh, but I want him anyway because he got good hair. You know, all that old crazy shit. I don't know. But don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Okay? Because I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't have shit to do with that. Okay? I've been living over here in California, not even knowing you or your circumstances. I didn't do it, boo-boo. It ain't me. I didn't do it. So anyway, but I, back to what I was telling my auntie and I was saying that, you know, I have to let go of this fantasy that I have perfect children. They're going to be who they're going to be. And my job is to love them. Love them past their pain. Love them past their circumstances. Love them past their decisions. I still just need to love them. And I just want them to know that regardless Mama's still here. We might disagree. We're going to disagree all the time. Because let me tell you, let me tell you right now. Miss Leo, oh my God, my daughter is a Leo. And I'm telling you, oh my God. Sometimes it's such a push and pull with her and I. It's crazy. It is so crazy. And it's like whatever I do, she wants the opposite of what I do. So my auntie says, well, you got to get rid of her anger. She's mad at you for something. What is she mad at you for? And, you know, I own that too. I own that. You know, and it's like, I look at the decisions that I've made in my life, you know, and I'm like, damn, I made some wrong turns. You know, I really, really made some wrong turns. I mean, I know that my kids have always been in the forefront, okay? And I was always thinking long term. Everything that Tina does is calculated, let's be clear. So, you know, I've always, you know, my biggest thing, let me tell you something. As a mother, my biggest thing was I wanted to make a home for my kids. A place where nobody has to tell us that we got to get the fuck out. You got to go. That was my biggest, oh, my, and my biggest accomplishment. That is my biggest accomplishment away from having my children away from graduating from school my biggest thing was to make our house a home for my kids for the rest of their lives that is what oh my god listen <laughs> and from the time i got pregnant with anthony okay I made some real crazy ass decisions. I did some things that I should not have done. You know, I went down there, applied for welfare, didn't qualify, you know what I'm saying? But I thought that I did, but you know, I was really naive to the fact because I did not know nothing about welfare, how you qualify, what you do, what you don't tell them, what you don't do. I didn't know none of that because my mom was never on the public assistance. When I, my existence, okay? Now, probably before my time, maybe my mom was, I don't know, but, you know, I was never on public assistance. You know, my family was never on it. So, and when I got pregnant with 
Anthony, I was going through some marital problems and I was assuming, you know, I'm just going to leave <laughs> I'm a, I'm leaving you, but once again, my my um all my moves were calculated, and I was like, but you know I, they were calculated, but I was still young too mentally on some things, and you know my cousin was like, well, girl, you go down there and apply for you some food stamps, girl, you get them, girl, just go down there and go get your five hundred, you know. So I took my black ass down there and got the five hundred, and but needless to say, bitch, you still married though. But you're still married, boo-boo. You can tell them that you're not, but guess what? When tax time comes and you file for income taxes and shit, and all those Social Security numbers get to ringing up and shit, and all the Social Security numbers of those kids that you claimed that you had um, in, in 2007, and now it's 2013, the IRS want to know where them kids at. You know what I'm saying? I never did that, but that was just some shit that came to my, you know what I'm saying? Came through the, you know, came through the channel and I just kicked it out my mouth. But yeah, the IRS, you think you getting over on them motherfuckers? And trust and believe, you are not. Mm -mm, you're not. You're not. When, you, when you're playing these games and bouncing checks and all the, I know I'm turning this video into certain other things. But when you're doing those things in your life, it has a way of turning itself around. And when you get to be my age and you want to have something to show for your life and the decisions that you made, you will have nothing. Because nothing from nothing leaves nothing. And if you've been out here hooking and crooking all in your 20s and your 30s and you're out here bullshitting and, you know, out here, you know, putting one up. Ain't nothing wrong with putting one up. But I didn't put one up until I got in my 40s. Let's be clear. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? And some of us use it for medicinal purposes. I will be hurt. So, you know, and then there's also my recreation that I love, too, as well. Let me go and put that out there, too, because I'm a realist. You know, I can't do nothing tell the truth. But um, when you look around your life and it's like, damn, nigga, I done made so many fucked up decisions and shit. And out here, and, you know, I mean, it's just. Bouncing checks, running up stupid ass old cell phone bills for your boyfriends and friends and putting them all in your plans and shit. Then you gotta turn around and file bankruptcy in your 20s, you know, over some penny ante bullshit that really didn't amount to nothing. And then niggas that was in your life then that you were trying to impress are now gone. You bought that motherfucking Wilson's leather coat, you know. And all that old type of shit. And you just had to have this parka and all that old type. That shit ain't going to do nothing. Babies, no. In your 20s, I know that, you know, you got to be suited and booted. You know, when you come in the office, you got to be filleted out and this and that and this. I got it. But just be clear that shit slows down as you get up there in age. And you want to have some shit to show for your money. So while you're partying and pop locking... Put some shit to the side so when you get over 40 and you look around your shit, baby, and you be like, you know what, damn, I remember when I got that right there, nigga. Damn, I remember when whoop the whoop 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 blessed me with that. Damn, you know what I'm saying? Because shit that you got on some honest shit lasts a long time. When you get some shit, you know, on some hook and crook, Hooking, crook. I say hooking and crooking. Hooking and crooking is hooking, selling pussy, or crooking is thieving and, and stealing and robbing and white collar crime and taking motherfucking social security numbers and driver license numbers and motherfucking credit card numbers because you work at the motherfucking uh, uh, cell phone company and you're taking them cell phone goddamn going on files and all that old white collar crime shit. Okay? Anyway. But that shit has a tendency to catch up. It truly, truly does. And you can tell the motherfuckers that was doing a whole lot in their life. And when the motherfuckers get 40, 45, 50, 60, and you can just be like, damn, nigga. Uh, nigga, what you been doing? You know what I mean? You can just tell. You can tell. You know, you can just tell. And I just don't want to, I just did not want to be that girl. You know, I didn't want to be that girl. And, and you know, my mom, let me go on and say that my mom, we didn't have this type of 
dialogue. We didn't have this type of exchange where I would talk to her about men, um, sex, um, the game, um, the entertainment business, all these types of things. Me and her didn't have an open exchange about that. I had to learn it my own way, you know, and, but I had to learn it sober. See, you can't jump into this basketball wise, love and hip hop, all this shit, reality TV and all that shit. You cannot jump into that shit and you're not sober. It ain't gonna work out right. I promise to God it ain't gonna work out right. If you fuck around and run into a baller, you run it, you fuck around and run into a shot caller, them niggas there, baby, you gotta stay sober. You got to stay sober. That is the key to fucking with that type of lifestyle is you got to stay razor sharp. You want to be successful with it or you just want to have, you know what I'm saying, want to be on some Carly Red shit and bounce from this nigga to that. I mean, I don't want to put that label on a goddamn. But mommy, you did do that, though. I mean, you know what I'm saying. From season to season, you was with a different nigga. I don't know, you know what I'm saying. But, you know, you don't want that type of reputation either that you just jump around from one basketball player to another or one producer to another or one goddamn linebacker to a running back. You know, you don't want that type of stigmata on you. If that goes with that, I threw it with it, so roll with it, okay? You don't want that type of thing on you. And let me say that when I begin to meet people in the entertainment business, I was in my 30s, okay? I was in my 30s. I'd already had my children, you know, and I, but I was sober, you know, and the relationships and the friendships that I built, the promiscuity that I went through, because I did that. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to go and say it. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't fucking this nigga, that nigga, this nigga, that nigga, this nigga. No. No. I had me a basketball player, and I was fucking with him, and I was fucking with him exclusively. Now, mind you, I'm not going to get all into my business, but, you know, I still had a husband, okay? He had a wife. So, I know about that life. Let me just go head on and say that. I'm going to leave that there, okay? So when you get to getting into, see, a lot of women, they want them a basketball player. They want them a this and that, and they want them a that and this, and they want this producer and that, and they want that and this and this. Well, let me just go and say that that shit is loaded. You don't know what these chicks is going through. You don't know. And I know that it looks good because they're stepping out of cars with bags like mine, baby. Did Miss Masiko step out of that motherfucking car with my... Listen, this is one of my favorite, 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 favorite bags of all times. Um, I call her sometime Miss 42 because I got it for my 42nd birthday. And Mr. Malibu blessed me with this. And oh my God, baby, let me tell you something. Because I know he watches my videos from time to time when he gets the opportunity to do so he will watch my videos and shit but baby oh my god you are a whole nother chapter in my life that i just never thought i never thought existed let me be clear i never ever 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 in my wildest of dreams thought that i would ever meet a man like you in my life you know i just want to get clear for a minute because this man means some shit to me you know, I mean, we're just friends. That's all. No sexual nothing to go with nothing. And baby, this man loves me like he would not believe. And I love you back. And it's like when I first met him, I felt like I was on a set of backs like a motherfucker. I, sometimes I feel like straight... Bats, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's crazy. 
Oh my God. I mean, you have shown me some things in my life that, oh my God, I just never, I just never seen before. You have taken me to places that, exclusives that you have to have credentials to get through. You know, you put me here with no addition, baby. I will never, ever forget that. You know, and even when I was call myself, you know what I'm saying, I got me a guard, you know, and all that old type of shit. It was cool, but I, we were fucking. And it was like, you know, it just, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I need to cut this shit out the video. I don't know. I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just in my feelings. Excuse me. This ain't your shit. Get the fuck out, please. Okay? Get the fuck out, please. Because you don't know nothing about where the fuck I done been through or what the fuck. You don't know. Okay? I have lived a life. Ladies, let me tell you something. Okay? Look. Check this out. I have lived a life that has been so cool. From my very beginning of existence, like truly, from a, from a little girl, I have lived a really, 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 really blessed and cool life. And I only thing that I can, I can attest it to is favor. Because there has been a favor been placed on my life. God has put play, favor on my life from a child. I've had near-death experiences throughout my life. I've died and come back and, you know, resuscitated and all, uh, just in my life. You know, at two years old, lost my life. They brought me back. They thought I was going to have, my dad was going to have to put a trach through my, you know, to give me an uh, open airway. And, but they brought a girl back and they brought me back. And, you know, it was like, you know. And just throughout the course of my life, man, the people and the people that have been in it, not the fair weather friends, because I've had them. And I've, I've come to the generalization now that a lot of times when I meet women, a lot of times women want to meet me to come into my life to see is this shit real or not. To come into my life to see if, if this bitch is really organic. To see if... The things that she say is it true to see if who she really knows um, can I can she help me get on um, I just want to ride in her car um, um, can you get us some passes to whoop de whoop you know that kind of shit you know and I've met a lot of them in my life oh my god. You know, and one thing I can say last night that Masika said, and it resonated with me, and so she said that she was always the chick that a lot of people, a lot of girls wanted to hang around, but they talked about her behind her back, and I was always that chick from elementary school to high school to college to my adult life. I've always been talked about, so what the fuck? I mean, what can I do? I mean, I have all, motherfuckers have always put a storyline with my ass. I might as well have my own theme music on some real shit. I have a soundtrack to my life on some real shit. For real. I have a soundtrack to my fucking life. And every man that I have fucked with, I have left them. Let me be clear. Every motherfucking man that I have fucked with in my life, I left them. I was never left. And, you know, we still have friendships that are like shoot to kill. Like, Tina, what do you need? Do you need anything? Do the kids need anything? Um, how's your car? How's your truck? How's this? Do you need to upgrade? I mean, motherfuckers be, I, I don't know. I, I can't call it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know. And... With the women that have come into my life, they can't take it. I, I've, I've come to accept that. I've come to accept it. You come into my life 
to see if my shit is organic. Once you see that it is, you realize, you know what? Check this out. I might not be on this bitch's level. And then they go away. That's what happens. I don't have to do a goddamn thing. Let me be clear. And if I'm lying on anyone right now, leave your motherfucking comment below or leave a goddamn video. Do we can we still do um uh video responses and shit? Attach that motherfucker on here. I accept it, goddamn it. Put it on Facebook and every damn thing. If I wronged anyone, please put it out there. You know what, Tina, you did whoop the 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 whoop. You took my man, you stuck on my Say it about me. I'm calling the motherfucker out right now. If I have ever tried to sleep with any man that any girl that I've ever known was fucking with, call me out now. If I've ever stole a $20 from your motherfucking ass, please put it out there. Put it out here. You have open reign to say right now that I have fucked you over. And I mean that from any man that I've fucked with, any chick that I've ever known in my life, any relative that feel like I've wronged them, Please, come on in this motherfucking front my ass off right now and say, bitch, you wronged me. You took my money. You called CPS on me. You did this to me. You fucked up my name. You put a phone on. You, you got a phone in my, in my name. Whatever it is that I've done to someone, leave your motherfucking comments below.